sometimes I got to ask myself, what in the world is wrong with me? I finally set up my first ever network attached storage device, NAS. I finally set it up here at the home office and I asked myself almost immediately, what took you so long, Steve? You should have been at this party a long time ago, but better late than never. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the Synology disk station right here on Dotto Tech. Steve Dotto here. How the heck you doing this fine day? At Dotto Tech, we make technology easy so you can do more. Now, today's demo, I'm gonna be taking you through a piece of hardware, which is we don't typically do a lot of here on Dotto Tech, uh, but I'll show you most of it from the software point of view because it is a network attached storage device. Basically, a big server that we can attach into a small home office or a business office that gives us all sorts of functionality beyond just saving files. Now, a little bit of backstory. The folks at Synology reached out to me and they actually provided me with this unit. So I didn't purchase the unit, uh, but they're not compensating me in any other way for creating this demo. Now, I said off the top that I wish that I had looked at a network attached storage device long ago. And I don't know why I didn't. Maybe because there's kind of the preconceived notion that they're a little bit complicated and difficult to use, but that can... That's nothing could be farther from the truth, uh, at least as far as the Synology disk station is concerned. Now they sent me the Synology Disk Station DS218 Plus. There's a wide variety of different capacities and storage of these network attached storage devices. Um, but this one here is ideal for a small office like mine. And it comes down to how many bays they have and how much data you want to store. And not just how much data you want to store and back up because I think a lot of us look at these as like great big backup machines, but they're far more than that. These are actually computers that can serve a variety of different services to you or to others because it'll connect to the internet as well. So you can actually use it as a web server so you can access your services from outside of the home or the home or the office as well as from within. Uh, now setting it up was as simple as can be. Plugging it in, you can see that the, the, the hardware itself is, is small, compact, fairly appealing looking. Uh, it's got two great big honking hard drives. Now the one that they sent me has two four terabyte drives in it. Now that doesn't mean that I have eight terabytes of storage because these devices are also RAID backup systems. Now a RAID backup system means that we have all of our data being stored on one of the drives and then the other drive mirrors that drive constantly so that if there's a drive failure on the first one, our first backup, we've got the second, the rated uh, uh, drive as a backup. Now these are mechanical devices. We've kind of established, I think, for a lot of us, there's been a certain complacency that's come into our backing up and archiving and how we manage our data because the hardware manufacturers and the fact that we have cloud computing and so much of our data backed up on the cloud, it's all so darn reliable that the old days of our hard drives turning into SEDs or smoke emitting devices is long gone. But the fact remains, the hard disks are still mechanical devices. And it's not a matter of if, it is a matter of when they will fail. At some point, they aren't going to work anymore. There's gonna be some sort of mechanical breakdown within that device. Uh, so having a rated array, having that, that, uh, that physical backup happening at the same time is just a, a great practical security measure for us all. So this still is a tremendous amount of storage. I mean, four terabytes of space is a massive amount of space to, to make available to us. Now, configuring this, uh, the, this station was pretty straightforward. Uh, I've configured it on my Mac. It doesn't matter whether you're on Mac or Windows or Linux or anything, it'll configure on all of those stations. And what they've done with the management tool is they've actually built it into a browser interface. So you actually launch and manage almost everything that to do with the disk station through your browser. L let me show you. Here's the installation process. 
The online support's pretty good for the disk station. They've got a nice FAQ document with all of the downloads attached where you can download the software to install. That begins the entire installation process. It's very easy to follow. The tutorials are good, but you could probably almost do it without the tutorial. I first of all connected the disk station to my network and made sure that my computer was on the same network. The software immediately discovered that the disk station was there. There was no unpleasant surprises. And then I had to go through and I had to give my server a name and create my user account, my username and password. Very typical uh, to almost setting up any other service, the sorts of things you'd expect. Of course, you want to make sure you have a good robust password and we are off to the next step in the process. The software then has to configure the storage device itself. It goes through uh, an, an update, making sure that the firmware is all updated and it installs all of the different services that you need, as well as allowing you to start to set up your basic systems, such as uh, an update and maintenance program where it's going to check for any updates for the software and all of those sorts of pre-scheduled tasks that you are going to apply to your network attached storage device. Then they set up something called Quick Connect, which is a quick way for you to connect, <laughs> surprisingly, to your disk station. What this is going to do is it's going to create a desktop shortcut that allows you to jump into your disk station at any point. Now, you'll be accessing all of the tools and all of the functionality within the disk station through your web browser, which is a familiar interface. So there's no dedicated app that you install, but instead it's all done through the web browser. Once all that's done, you'll agree to all of the different terms of services and we are ready to go. Now the disk station has all of these recommended packages that you can install. These are the services which I was referring to uh, at the earlier in this demo where you can install video tools or media servers uh, to your disk station. So you can install all of those packages and you are set and ready to go. Then they will take you on a guided tour through the features of the disk station and you are a networked attached storage person just like that. Okay, let me take you into the software itself now that it's been installed. I've had it up and running on my computer now for a couple of weeks. I'm still kind of figuring out all of the different aspects and the different things that will do for me. And I have to say that I'm continuously delighted by the things that I'm discovering about the disk station. Now here I am in my web browser. I'm still kind of showing you the, uh, the, the details and the features page. I have it installed. I have access to the to the disk station installed just as a shortcut in my browser. Now you could have dropped a shortcut on your desktop. There's lots of ways to do this, but this is the this is the way that I like to manage it. And here is the disk station as it sits right now. Um, now here's the one thing that you need to understand right off the top. On the right hand side here, you've got some widgets that tell you about the system health and you tell you about the processes being run on the disk station. And the thing that you need to understand is this, it is a computer in its own right. It has a processor, it has RAM, and it because it can, as I say, do more than just back up your computer, it can also serve all sorts of different services to you. And to get an idea for those services, this is the place that will really open your eyes as to what you can do with a disk station. Of course, it will do backups. It will do incremental backups. It will archive. It will protect the information for you long term because of that RAID array, the fact we have two hard drives installed. Let me take you into the package center, which is where we install all of the additional functionality that's built into the disk station. And I got to admit, this blew me away. I never really imagined that I could have all of these services myself available to me that I could manage, maintain myself. And in many cases, they cost me nothing extra myself because they're all just tools that are installed on the disk station. Things like backing up all of your different office type documents, regardless of whether they're in Gmail or Office 365, there are tools that are dedicated to back up those exact applications. There are servers for your, for your contacts or your own calendar. If you don't want to use Google Calendar or Microsoft Calendar, you can manage your own calendar or contacts services in your own, even host your own chat server. All of these tools are available to you. And if you want to take a look at what any one of them does, you just click on the install button and it will give you a detail of what it does. For example, as I was scrolling through, one of the things that caught my attention right away is this. There's a podcast 
tool that's built into it. I'm working on my new podcast. I have a podcast host that I use. If I click right here on the icon, it gives me a description of what the package does and how it allows me to, in this case here, host the XML feed, host the feed for my podcast myself. Now that's a little bit geeky, I will admit, but it's pretty appealing if I was if I wanted to just serve my own podcast. I pay for this service on the outside, but I could replicate it and serve it from my server here myself should I choose to. The package center gives you all of those. The package center is just full of very cool ideas of things that you can install. Photo station. One of the things people use it the most for though when they purchase it is the video station tool or one of the other media server tools that are built into it such as Plex where you host all of your music or all of your photos or all of your movies that you have digitized on your home system and then you serve them to your different devices through the home through the use of that tool that the, 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 which you install on the disk station and of course the fact that the disk station is a computer means that it can effectively manage stream that content and manage how that content is being served to the different devices within your network. It's, it's, it's very sophisticated and incredibly powerful, even to the point of being able to install true web tools, things like WordPress. You can actually run your own WordPress server from within the, uh, from within the network attached storage device. So every time I open it up, I find something new that I can do. For example, my backup service, iDrive Backup, it has a built-in interface th straight through to the server so that I don't have to manually recreate that interface. It just, it, it'll continue to impress you. It, it seems to me that network detached storage devices are the gift that keeps giving. And as I said off the top, I wonder what took me so long to figure it out in order to, in order to install one. I'm so happy it's here. And now I'm re-engineering all of my different processes, how I host my data, how I serve my videos and how we edit our videos. We're coming up with entirely new protocols for how we manage all of that within our team because we now have this asset that we never had before, a network attached storage device. Now there are, to be fair, many different makes of network attached storage devices. A lot of people build them themselves out of old computers and big hard drives. There's open source software that will allow you to do it. But as far as I'm concerned, this Synology disk station that they sent me, it is so dead simple, easy to install and so reliable in its application and so predictable in how it's going to work uh, that I think that that is a terrific way to go. But do your research yourself and see which ones you like. If you have any comments or suggestions for us here on Dotto Tech, I read each and every comment, so please post your comments below. And if you've not yet subscribed to our channel, what are you waiting for? Click on that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you hear when we upload new videos here at Dotto Tech. A great big thanks to my new friends at Synology for providing me with this awesome piece of hardware. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.